two more seasons. We're gonna get to do all that stuff we talked about. We're gonna be building Mark's character. We're gonna be doing all, we're gonna be going to space. There might be some extra Levy if I could spoil something. Welcome back everyone. This is going to be my Invincible Season 2 video. Robert Kirkman dropped a teaser a while ago and obviously we have all the end credit scenes just teasing all the big stories they have coming in the next couple of seasons. Some of the stories that they set up and that Robert Kirkman was talking about recently will spill into Season 3, probably even beyond that as well. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I will be doing Invincible Season 2 videos. Robert Kirkman did say they'd already started work on that, but he didn't confirm exactly when it was going to be released. It actually takes way longer to finish animation than it does for live action stuff. And on top of that, one of the cool things about the Invincible series, even though it's animated, they actually do it as an hour long series, although it's hour long with commercials if it were to air on broadcast. So really it's more like 45 minutes per episode but that's double the length of a normal animated episode. So it just takes them a really long time to actually get those episodes out. If you didn't see the video, Robert Kirkman also posted a video where he was talking to Steven Yoon, who plays Invincible, Mark Grayson, about them being renewed for season two and season three. One of the reasons why they renewed them for season two and season three at the same time is just because it takes a long time to do each season and they want them to be able to work ahead. So that there's a huge break between season two and season three. We, okay? we have just heard from Amazon that we have been picked up for uh, season two. Yeah. We're also getting picked up for season three as well. Season two and three. But just to start with the biggest teaser that he talks about is Angstrom Levy. He's going to be the main villain of season two. But obviously there'll be many other villains that show up during the different episodes. The really cool thing about his character is that he's a multiverse villain. So the way Robert Kirkman talks about the future of the show is that they'll continue to escalate with each season. So just in terms of world building, they'll be getting into multiverse territory with alternate versions of Invincible, other universes where things went down very differently. They'll also be getting into the coalition of planets more as Alan the Alien teased in their big war against the Viltrumites and what's going on in other parts of the universe. They used the Flaxons during season one to tease a little bit of the multiverse because they came from an alternate dimension where time moves a little bit differently. But Angstrom Levy is like the fullest expression of the multiverse concept. The comic book timeline for his story is just a little bit different because it overlaps with the Mahler twins and some of the things that they did during season one. So they might change it just a little bit. But Robert Kirkman did confirm that they would continue to change the comic book story for the TV episodes. They did the same thing during season one. If you read the comic book, you notice that there was a bunch of storylines that they just got rid of that they just skipped over and a bunch of stuff from later in the comics that they moved up. Like when Robot basically cloned himself another body using the Maulers, that doesn't really happen in the comics till around when they're doing the Angstrom Levy stuff because Angstrom Levy also winds up breaking the Maulers out of prison. But they just did that during season one. So either they'll change that during season two or they'll just play it for more comedy because Invincible, even though it's very WTF, plays a lot of these moments for comedy. Like the Maulers get broken out of prison and they wind up breaking that same guard's arm again. But without getting too deep into his storyline, basically he breaks the Maulers out of prison to help him create another mind transference device that they normally just use for cloning themselves. Only Angstrom Levy doesn't want to clone himself. He wants to accumulate the sum total of all knowledge from as many alternate realities as possible. So even without the Maulers help, he's able to construct a device that allows him to travel to alternate realities. He uses that to assemble a team of other versions of himself from alternate realities, then modifies the Mahler's device so that it'll allow him to transfer or basically download all the knowledge from all of his copies into his own mind, making him this all-knowing villain. But as he activates the device, Cecil learns about what he's doing and calls Mark in to stop him and the Maulers. And even though they play it for a little bit of comedy, like Mark is still learning to be a superhero. So he kind of fumbles his way through the fight, but he's so powerful that they're not really a threat to him. So they just play it for some funny moments. And he inadvertently breaks Angstrom Levy's machine while it's in the middle of downloading all the knowledge from his multiverse duplicates. And even though it kind of works, it does download a lot of their knowledge into his mind. It also winds up leaving him horribly disfigured. And he swears revenge on Invincible and uses the multiverse to pursue that. He's a really cool character, but as you can see, they play the character for a lot of comedy. But the other cool thing about his character is that through him, they get to do all these other different versions of Invincible because it's the multiverse. Like during his first appearance, he's grabbing another Angstrom Levy from a version of Earth where Invincible actually went to the dark side and agreed to help his father, Omni-Man, take over the planet. 
he's grabbing this alternate angstrom levy right in the middle of this same fight scene that he had with his father in the finale of the tv show only on this version of earth invincible instead of saying no to him actually said yay viltrumites and they start to take over the planet so eventually they wind up doing a bunch of really cool looking evil iterations of Invincible from different universes through Angstrom's run as a villain in the comics, culminating in what they call the Invincible War. It's sort of like their version of a reverse Marvel Secret Wars type of event where instead of a bunch of alternate reality heroes teaming up with each other, it's Angstrom Levy unleashing a team of evil versions of Invincible on the main universe. One of the other big things that Robert Kirkman was hyping up during season two was the coalition of planets. Now, Alan the alien explained a little bit to Mark what was going on with that and what their main goal is, trying to build support in the rest of the universe to rebel against the Viltrumites and get rid of them, like the rest of the universe versus the Viltrumites. You learn a little bit more about the day-to-day -day with the Coalition of Planets and Alan the Alien's backstory. He explained a little bit of his backstory during Season 1, but I think we'll just get more of him during Season 2. I'm assuming that Seth Rogen will come back to do the voice for his character. That whole arc in the comics is called the Viltrumite War. That's sort of like their big Avengers Infinity War type of moment where they actually do fight the Viltrumites. They do have a plan, but it doesn't go down exactly the way you think it would. We'll also probably meet some of the other Viltrumites during season two. There are many that you see during the comics, but after Omniman, Conquest is one of the next big ones that Mark winds up going against. And then eventually you work your way up to Thrag, who's sort of the de facto leader of the Viltrumite people. There's also a lot of Viltrumite history that they only brushed over really quickly during season one. They'll probably get deeper into that during season two and season three. There are a lot of other minor villains that you see during those end credit scenes. Like you see the Maulers get rearrested, locked back up. Like I said, they're a big part of the Angstrom Levy plot. So either they'll break them back out again and use it for some comedy or they'll find some other way for Angstrom Levy to get their technology. You see the Flaxons preparing to attack Earth again and declaring revenge on Omniman because he basically wiped out their entire planet. That was probably one of the coolest moments too, watching him go ham on an entire planet in the span of what seems like just a couple weeks, just long enough for him to grow some facial hair there. We see the Titan has taken over as the new boss of the city after they got rid of his old boss. It just seems like he's going to continue to be a thing, but it's sort of like the devil you know. Doc Seismic is back and they've escalated his threat. He's controlling a whole bunch of magma golems this time. Probably one of the bigger teasers though is Cecil inspecting the new upgraded reanimate because they actually did give Omniman a run for his money. They overwhelmed him for a little bit before he took them down, but these are still very early versions of these that they continue to iterate on. It's sort of like Terminators, like they get better and better over time. And even though they portray the Viltrumites like they're totally unkillable, except other Viltrumites, like a Viltrumite could kill another Viltrumite in Battle Beast could probably kill a Viltrumite, like he almost kills Mark. For the most part, the way they portray them during season one, they're relatively unkillable. That was Cecil's whole thing. Like they were trying to find ways to kill Viltrumite cells and they couldn't do it. Like whatever we do, we can't find a way. They just won't die. Eventually they do find Viltrumite weaknesses that they can't exploit. Also through the Coalition of Planets storyline as well. But some of that stuff, like the Viltrumite War storyline, they might not get into till many seasons later, like season three, season four. Some of that stuff is way further ahead in the comics. For the most part, it just seems like Angstrom Levy will be the main storyline for season two. Maybe that'll culminate in the season two finale with them doing a version of the Invincible War storyline. Even though it sounds really epic, a bunch of alternate reality versions of Invincible fighting the main version of Invincible, it only lasted for a single issue, so it was actually a pretty short war. And even though Omniman took off at the end of the episode, like he finally decided that he did care about Mark and he wasn't going to kill him. So he had to find some way to make up for it because his current marching orders from Thrag from the Viltrumite command structure were to take over other planets and he had chosen to take over Earth. That had been his mission for the last 20 years. In order to make up for that failure for not taking over Earth, he has to go find another planet to take over. And that leads to another big storyline and the reveal of another big character. So without getting too deep into that, I don't know if they're going to wind up doing the Oliver character during season two, if that'll be a big reveal or WTF moment and maybe like the finale, or if they'll save that for season three. Like I said, during season one, there was a lot of storyline that they pulled from way further ahead in the comics and moved it up. So they might do the same thing with season two, just do storyline from way further ahead in the comics. But if you have not read the comics, it actually ended in 2019. So you can actually read the entire comic book story now. They won't wind up doing everything from the comics and they will change a bunch of stuff. But it is still a really cool story. And it'll give you a pretty good idea for some of the stuff that they'll do in future seasons. But the big takeaway is that with each season, they will continue to escalate the conflict. Things will get bigger, more galactic, crazier and crazier. Obviously, season two is just pushing that into multiverse storytelling. 
There's also a lot of other stuff during season two that they'll cover that I talked about during my finale video from season one, so I'll link that at the end of this too. I'm not really expecting to see a bunch of footage from season two till either the very end of this year, maybe sometime early next year, but I do think that they'll probably be able to get season two out by late next year at the latest. But while you wait for everything, click here for my Invincible Season 1 finale video and click here for my brand new Thor 4 Love and Thunder first look video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys tonight.